we get better at hearing our own voice, our own conscience, and listening to our instincts. Addicts who make it to recovery have pretty good instincts, but we've taught ourselves over time not to trust them. Learning the difference between the voice of our intuition and the voice of our disease is not something that can be explained. We figure it out in meditation, when we practice listening to ourselves and our higher power. We share our experience with our sponsor as it unfolds, and he or she points out to us when our instincts are serving as well. We become increasingly aware of our choices, our motives, and our behavior. We come to know what we were thinking when we made a decision, and we recognize the difference between thinking through to a decision and reacting or acting on impulse. Listening to our intuition means that we can be open to others without being naive or foolhardy. We learn to trust our intuition and honor our feelings. The conscious contact we speak of in the 11th step is a relationship with our higher power. Intimacy is conscious contact with another human being. We connect. As we get close to others we see the divine in them, and we see it in ourselves as well. We pay attention to them, and to ourselves when we're with them. When we feel real joy at seeing a struggling member finally get the 30-day P-tag, when we find the words we didn't know we had in us, when we make a genuine connection with another human being and feel something shift inside of us, we feel love in action, flowing through us, changing us for the better. Each of our relationships teaches us how to make our other relationships better, stronger, more meaningful, if we stop and listen for the lessons. And all of these relationships, in turn, bring us back to our relationship with ourselves. We cannot say that one is more important than another, any more than we could say one side of a pyramid is more important than the next. In fact, the pyramid that is in our symbol is made up of relationships, with self, society. Living Clean Approval Draft for Decision at WSC 2012. 90. Service, and God, rooted in a base of goodwill, these are the relationships that bring us to a point of freedom. Our capacity to love grows in proportion to the effort we make to show love, and our willingness to accept it. And with that capacity for love, something so many of us never even thought we wanted, we begin to feel that our lives have meaning and purpose. The harm we've done, the pain we've suffered, the loss we've experienced all deepen our compassion for others, and our understanding of their struggles. Our real value is in being ourselves, not in spite of what we have been through, but because of it. Living Clean Approval Draft for Decision at WSC 2012. A New Way of Life. Oh. Her literature tells us that we become acceptable, responsible and productive members of society, but it also cautions that social acceptability does not equal recovery. Both statements are true, but they are not mutually exclusive. We each measure being a productive member of society in our own way. Our ideas of success are as individual as we are. We start at different places and our destinations are just as varied. We know how to do some things very well and others not at all. We may enter recovery with a career still in place, or it may be that getting a steady place to live is a big step. We have this in common. We want to be free. We want to feel accepted and respected without pretending to be anything other than who we are. No matter what our accomplishments, the 
principles by which we live will sustain or destroy us. We progress in this journey by applying what we learn in recovery to the rest of our lives. Step 12 calls this, practicing these principles in all our affairs. The freedom we are seeking is not some abstract thing. It's how we live. Our basic text goes on to tell us, the steps do not end here. The steps are a new beginning. Now offers us the principles that will transform us in the laboratory in which we practice applying these things before we take them into the world. The work we do in the steps helps us to define our values and teaches us to work toward our goals. It doesn't matter how many times we have taken the steps, there is always something new in the work and in the reward when we do it to the best of our ability. But when we stop halfway through, we don't just miss half the gifts of recovery, we miss the point. Oddly, it's just when we come face to face with our most painful character defects that we stop surrendering. Our commitment to work the steps has consequences whether or not we follow through. When we stop in the middle, we leave ourselves with too much awareness and not enough hope. When we see the process through, we notice that doing the work takes much less energy than avoiding the work. We surrender, accept ourselves in the moment, and graciously allow our lives to unfold. Finally, we can stop seeking the piece of the puzzle that will make it all okay. We practice living a principled life, and our journey into the world shapes itself from there. We let go of our fear of change and come to realize that we are all changing all the time. We can embrace that change and truly believe that we can stay clean no matter what. The process gets simpler, doing the right thing comes more naturally. We try new things, exploring deeper layers inside and higher levels outside. As our values change, we change our lives. The process is like a spiral staircase. Again and again we come to the same view, only each time we are seeing it from a different perspective. Being open to one another's viewpoints helps us to clarify our own thinking. When we put love, effort, and commitment into action, our lives miraculously change. Moving beyond, social acceptability. When we get here, we are told that, we are not interested in, who your connections were, what you have done in the past, how much or how little you have, but only in what you want. 91. 92. To do about your problem and how we can help. Years down the line, this statement remains true. No matter where we are heading, we go about building our new lives in the same way. With time we learn that how we get there matters more than the destination itself. One of the benefits of our experience is that we know our participation in society is a choice. How we engage with the world around us is our decision. Whether or where we want to fit in is our decision, too. Integrating into the world in a way that is comfortable for us is part of our journey, not the destination. Finding our place in society isn't the goal, it's a means by which we achieve our goals. The idea of achieving social acceptability can distract us from the goal of awakening our spirits. Many of us ask ourselves to what society we want to be acceptable. Some of us understand, society, to be not itself. We find a way to make ourselves at home and not, even if we have always been loners, skeptics, and outsiders. When we think about finding our place in the world, though, we may confront additional challenges. 
If we got our identity from being outsiders, the idea of joining anything can seem a little fishy. Coming back to society is a difficult step, and there may be risk involved. No one can make that decision for us. I always felt like an outsider when I was growing up. I found acceptance in drug culture, a member shared. That feeling of belonging can be a powerful draw for us. The lifestyle is sometimes harder to let go of than the drugs. When we take a look at what compels us to put so much emphasis on things outside ourselves, we often find that what is driving us is fear. We are afraid of ourselves, afraid of the world, and afraid someone will find out how afraid we are. We hide behind all sorts of screens, from rigid social conformity to outright hostility. For people who have been through so much, we can be extraordinarily sensitive. We mistakenly believe that social acceptability can give us immunity from the pain that seems to come with caring about what other people think. Figuring out our strengths and weaknesses can be tricky, sometimes they look a lot alike. All of us are missing pieces and parts. Some of us have a long way to go just to learn the most basic principles of appropriate behavior, while others have mastered the art of covering whatever might be wrong with a coat of lipstick or leather. We can get caught up in looking good, or projecting an image of who we wish we were. If we allow things outside ourselves to define who we are, we end up like a tree with no roots. At the first storm we are liable to come crashing down. When seeking approval becomes more important than recovery, we are more vulnerable to relapse than we recognize. Getting the outsides right is not only about wanting approval, though. We are learning to respond appropriately to life. Many of us mask low self-esteem with inappropriate behavior. Often we assume that other people will do what we did in our worst moments. We push people away for fear they will see us as we see ourselves. Allowing ourselves to appear in the world as we are is a big step. We are mindful of our behavior and our surroundings without giving up our individuality. But we also begin to let our guard down, let people in, and share who we are. What we find, of course, is that when we are less afraid we tend to be less frightening to others. Ultimately, the issue isn't how society accepts us, but whether we accept society and our role in it. Living Clean Approval Draft for Decision at WSC 2012 Chapter 6 A New Way of Life 93 Our priorities change over the course of our recovery. In the beginning, simply not using is a full-time job. When we transition out of this desperation, many of us get preoccupied with material things. Take success for security. When our priorities shift again, it may be a result of a different kind of change, a gradual realization that a deeper satisfaction awaits us. I believed I was acceptable as long as the bills were paid. I worked hard, but forgot to take care of myself physically, mentally, and spiritually. Gradually, my understanding began to develop. As the connection to my higher power deepened, I came to a clearer vision of what I wanted. I was no longer willing to let labels hold me back or define me. I stopped thinking about social acceptability in terms of status. I wanted to be a person people were comfortable being around. After finding my way to the surface and taking that breath of life, I wanted to share it freely, with no false motives. Finding our place in the world.
start with the goal of not using, and our dreams and goals grow as we recover. While some of us crave material success or social status, others want no part of that. Ultimately we define social acceptability for ourselves. Even so, it's a moving target and it changes over time. What we consider an acceptable life in early recovery may seem inadequate or even embarrassing later on. Just being able to bathe and get through the day without a felony was a big deal for me, said one member. However much or little we have, our feelings of fear or comfort, security or scarcity have more to do with our perspective than anything else. We always remember that a day clean is a day one, no matter how far we have come or how far we have yet to go. Dreams really do come true, but that's almost never the end of the story. Achievement takes us out past where our planning or projecting ends. We can mistake a goal for an ultimatum. There's only one way it's supposed to be, and anything else is failure. We need to remember that we have only a fleeting glimpse of our higher powers will for us. Our desires may set us in a direction, but the journey takes us somewhere that never occurred to us. Some of us are naturally dynamic and thrive on a lot of color and excitement. We might worry that life we are comfortable with might not be very exciting. Letting go of our attachment to drama makes it possible to enjoy simple things without feeling we must constantly make something happen. We discover that we can be passionate about our lives as they really are. We learn that the kind of work required to live a good life is not nearly as difficult as the kind of work that results from sabotaging our own efforts. We spend years creating wreckage, damage, and drama, and then cleaning it up to make room for more. When we are spinning our wheels in chaos of our own making, our sponsor might ask us, what are you running from? After we stop this destructive cycle, we can see how much it requires of us. We find that we can be radiant without being radioactive. When we're finally able to settle down and breathe, our lives get much easier. That space gives us room to look around and ask ourselves what we love about our lives, and what we might want to change. Part of what shifts for us is our perception of what constitutes a crisis. Many of us spend much of our early recovery on, high alert. We are so much more aware of the wreckage of our past than the miracle of our recovery that we seem to be in a chronic state of emergency. Addicts are funny. We tend to get very dramatic about little things, but we deal with Living Clean Approval Draft for Decision at WSC 2012. 94. Catastrophe better than most people do. We come to understand more about the scale of our experiences as we live life on life's terms. Experience gives us the ability to put events and situations into proper perspective. The fewer secrets we have, the less we tend to be concerned about what others are saying or doing. It's our secrets we are afraid of. We hide because we are ashamed. Telling the truth without embellishment or judgment limits drama. Our own willingness to meet the truth and deal with it takes a lot of the air out of the drama in our own minds, and on the gossip circuit. Ongoing step work takes the denial and deception out of our actions. As we learn compassion, we get less pleasure from magnifying the struggles of others. When we work hard and earn a victory, we certainly can be proud of ourselves. However, there is a big difference between feeling good about ourselves and believing our own hype. We 
are in trouble when we start mistaking outside success for recovery. When we allow our humility and integrity to decay, we are a danger to ourselves and everyone around us. If we confuse our priorities, we can lose more than we thought we had at stake. And when we try to fill up the empty places inside us with material things or lofty positions, we find that we are emptier than before. When our gratitude is gone, we forget where we came from and no longer relate to the newcomer. We are so lost in delusion that we don't even know there is a problem. Many members have died as a result of such arrogance. Net worth does not equal self-worth. We have all seen members achieve great success and still use or want to destroy themselves. Perhaps because we have been so far outside society, we tend to be very conscious of how it works. Addicts seem to have a nose for deceit. We have no time for people playing fast and loose with the truth, even if we struggle to consistently practice honesty ourselves. It's our own struggle with honesty that makes the principle so important to us. We know how easy it is to let go of our integrity in favor of short-term gain, even when we know the consequences. We are acutely insightful about relationships between people and about the flow of money and power, and we know how to position ourselves to get what we want. So it's no surprise that so many of us get caught up in chasing status, either inside or outside the fellowship. We find freedom when we learn to be ourselves and support our own efforts. This is not just a financial issue. When we apply the seventh tradition to our own lives, we discover that we have some pretty twisted ideas about independence. On one hand, we may be fiercely aloof, unwilling to trust others or to risk getting too attached to anyone or anything. On the other hand, we may be accustomed to getting our needs met without having to take responsibility. Some of us feared independence in our active addiction, clinging to our partners or families for support. Being institutionalized led some of us to feel absolutely alone, but without any autonomy at all. Getting out of prison was freedom, said one member, but it was also terrifying. I didn't know how to live, and I wasn't too sure I wanted to learn. Learning to make decisions for ourselves also means accepting responsibility for those decisions. Blaming others and harboring resentments can be a way to pretend we have no responsibility for the work we must do inside ourselves and out in the world. I went to jail clean, said a member. I kept feeding my disease without drugs until I learned to apply the program to all. Living clean approval draft for decision at WSC 2012. Chapter 6. A New Way of Life 95. Areas of My Life Step 4 began the demolition process that prepared me for society. I had to learn how to participate without being destructive. Taking responsibility for ourselves is necessary for us to move forward, and it opens the door to the immense process. It is an immense to those who care for us that we are no longer a burden on them. It is an immense to society that we can give back. And it is an immense to ourselves when we practice self-determination, making our own way and our own choices. One of the benefits of taking a personal inventory is that we don't have to wait for someone else to tell us who we are or how we are. When we are willing to stand for our own dreams and beliefs, we are practicing a deeper kind of self-support. We develop the ability to choose what is right for us and to stand for it even when it's not what others believe. 
don't have to be defensive to stand up for ourselves and our principles. With new perspective, we start to trust our recovery and our instincts. Addicts have really good instincts, and really bad impulses. Learning to recognize the difference takes time and practice. A sponsor and trusted friends can help us sort out the difference between our desires and our compulsions. We may change because we choose to, or change may happen as a result of circumstances beyond our control. Our lives require ongoing maintenance, and our definitions of success change as life gives and takes. I had success in all areas of my life. After a change in my career and a move to a new town, it was all gone. My success, self-esteem, even my joy and participation at NA meetings. I was an old-timer and I didn't know what to do. I began to understand that my recovery and self-worth were based in externals. When success and approval left, I collapsed. A new perspective and a walk through the steps from a different angle were necessary. Comparing our current problems to the problems we had in active addiction can be a tactic we use to avoid dealing with them. We sometimes belittle the struggles we face as gold-plated problems, but if we ignore them we may get a gold-plated relapse. Ultimately, our success is measured not from the outside but from the inside. When we apply the principles in our lives we succeed in many ways, but most of all we become whole. The idea of integration is closely linked to the spiritual principle of integrity. Integrity is unity within ourselves. We are the same person wherever we are. Our commitment to our values as we understand them is not based on convenience or circumstance. We don't have to pretend to be someone else, or hold one side of ourselves to the light and hide the rest, in order to function or be accepted. Our comfort with ourselves is attractive. When we are practicing integrity, we can walk with dignity whether or not we find approval outside ourselves, we know who we are. Freedom comes from discovering who we are inside. Recovering addicts are brilliant, creative, and compassionate people, whether we know it about ourselves or not. The steps help us to develop integrity, a realistic perspective on ourselves, a means to achieve self-acceptance, and a process to become acceptable to society. Many of us don't feel like we are good enough for life in recovery, and we show it in the way we treat ourselves. When we practice respect and compassion for ourselves, our thoughts and feelings start to change. Self-acceptance frees us to take responsibility for our lives and to accept the gifts that are available to us. When we take the serenity prayer seriously and really consider what in our lives we do have the courage to change. Living Clean Approval Draft for Decision at WSC 2012. 96. We find that our ability to shape our lives is limited more by our willingness than by anything outside ourselves. Stability. Like so many things we strive for in recovery, stability is an inside job. The feeling of stability starts from the knowledge that we are okay no matter what happens. It's a sense of security and safety in our own lives. We may believe that this will be a result of achieving goals, like getting a house, a partner, a job, or some imagined amount of money. But when fear grips us, it doesn't matter what we have or who we share it with. The security that we seek comes from peace within ourselves, a relationship with a higher power, and connection with others.
coming to believe that our life is really ours can take a long time. For some of us, stability begins.